In this video, we're going to take the bed off of this truck. It's pretty well rotted out. You can see it's rubbing up against the cab. And it's sitting lower than it should be. We're going to remove this and put a flat bed on it. First thing I'm going to do is get a weight on it. See what we are empty. Okay, we're coming in at 7,500 pounds. So that's our starting weight. Before we've done anything to this truck, we know where it's at. Now we're going to take the bed off. Okay, we got that up in the air, and we have a weight measurement here on the scale. It looks like we're coming up with about 360 pounds on this bed. Now the tailgate's off. Good, so, so let's get the truck out of here so we can get this bed out of here. The bed is off, and now we're gonna clean up these studs we cut and see where we need to go for the bed. Um, we're going to do some cab corners in a different video, so once I get these bolts off, I'm going to do the cab corners, then we're going to come back to the bed. Okay, now that we have the cab corners done, beds off, I uh, wanted to kind of just get a gist of how this was going to go, and I set up the frame, and I made some brackets to set it off of the frame down below. Four of them, same locations that the bed bolts were in and I debated to save the inch and lower this bed one inch flipping them horizontal and that looked pretty good because it would save that inch we have three inch two by three three sixteenths here then we have a one and a half by one and a half tubing and that will be laddered down and then the floorboards will run this way. So we're going to be about three inches above this frame, which is going to put us up pretty close to the vent for the cab. So what I did was I flipped it horizontal and I like that, except um, I was a little bit worried about deflection. So I set up a, a measurement device and figured we would um, dial, put a dial on it, and I'd simulate a point load with no bolts holding this in, just sitting here the way it is. These are just sitting here. And I would stand on it and simulate um, 225 pounds if I was right here, which is probably about the most point load it would ever see. I'd measure the deflection. So I could post those pictures. Now, what I ended up with was zero deflection when I had it vertical, when I had the three inches running vertical. When I had it horizontal, I ended up with about 11 or 12 thousandths. I was standing on it and then I would kind of hop up and down a little bit and see what it would deflect and it would go up to about 12. So that kind of tells me that this extra inch of it standing up makes it a lot more rigid. So I think that's worth the sacrifice of the inch just because of that deflection. Now this is a single wheel, so it's not going to see a, a pile of load like if it was a dually. So we're going to go with it upright 
And I'm gonna continue to make more of these adapters. And how I did that was I cut some pieces of two by three, and then just a flat piece of three sixteenths to go over top with a nut welded onto it. And then this will go this way and we'll weld that around. And then it will, it will sit in here and get welded all together. We'll tack it to hold it and then I'll pull it off and you know, do a whole bead around it. This one here has to go this way because the bolt hole does not line up. The bolt hole here is offset compared to the other one. So in order to keep this rail straight, I actually have to offset that nut a little bit. So that one's gonna have to turn. I think the other three can stay the same. I'm gonna make the other side, put that beam up. This is a nine foot piece right here, already cut to length. So that'll be the end doing that. And then we'll kind of set it up and see what that looks like. And if it all goes, clean all this mill scale off. So I'll be doing a lot of sand in here. So we'll be back. out of the tank and it's usually mounted roughly horizontal here and we're pretty close we would be good if the neck was going to stay in this position however that is going to be up by our bed I don't know what I'm going to do yet here I'm going to think about it for a moment and may cut that out but I'm thinking I don't have to because even if it's up, it's not touching. The sleeve is touching. But if I snug that down, the sleeve's not touching even in the up position. So. <laughs> the front rail and the back rail clamped down and I'm going to tack them they're squared up I'm going to tack them down just to hold them for now and these I'm not worried about just yet I'm going to center them up once I get this tacked down and held square and I'm going to put the outer tube on the outside and then I'll be able to butt them up on this side and then that way I could trim them for the exact measurement on the other side. The rails lined up, ended up going 16 on center, and then I did the odd spacing in the uh, front and the back, even them out, and then went 16 on center. Originally I had it on the diamonds, but that didn't quite work out. No matter which way I put it, our rail was right on top of the tire. And I was just trying to avoid that, even though we still have extra distance I uh, just wanted to give that little bit extra room, plus that'll toughen it up a little bit from any twisting on this outside rail once we put the pockets on the outside. So I also stuck two lateral supports in for the frame. They're just kind of sitting here. One here and one towards the front, kind of picking a third of the span. Let's try to stick in the middle here in between the two supports. 
So next I'm going to tack these down just so they don't move. Tack those lateral supports in. Uh, I may want to do some more of the welding on here until I get it firmed up. Maybe put the outsides on, keep it from moving. So we'll see how that goes. Welded these down, the floor rails. I've got this cleaned. The side rail is cleaned and ready to tack on. It's in the right spot. And here is the mud flap. Just use some one and a half by one and a half angle, 15 inch, 15 inch. And then I think this was 21 and a quarter. Just to hold that from getting kicked around. It's pretty sturdy, like it does not move at all. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'll start finishing fitting that side in making sure I stay square. So I know this side is square from when I did one end versus the other. So I pretty much lined it up where it goes. The other side, I'll check my square again after I finish up, make sure I stay in the right spot. I've also gone ahead a little bit and drilled for my three quarter inch lights I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to run the wires yet, but I wanted to uh, drill those. At least get one hole. I got eight to do. There'll be another one over here, another one on the back plates for the corners. I also need to get the wires in from that hole. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put the wire in here. And I'm going to come out the back side with a grommet and then I'm going to run down maybe over to the main frame and then run the harness down the side. Put this on and get the frame continued here. Okay so I got the frame tacked up and I've got both of the mud flaps done. Just kind of sitting there because I'll be pulling them back off. I think now I'm going to start on the stake pockets. I'm going to put some stake pockets. Bought them on Amazon for about, I don't know, about three bucks each. They're cheaper than making them. So I'm going to put four all the way around. And then we're going to do the rub rail around the outside. And the only other thing I was looking at was what to do with the fuel filler now. A lot of these years have issues with the gas spitting back on you, so I think they're a little bit too low. There's not enough angle. So I took it off and currently in a debate on how to modify it to make it where I want it. I got a stake pocket gun right here, so I got to stay away from that and I got to keep enough room from the body so that we don't hit it. So I'm going to make some kind of bracket here and bring this up on an angle then it'll be about a couple inches higher than the factory and but I've got a plate to put on the front after the stake pocket goes in and then that can go on so I've got a hole in that front plate to get that in there I don't know how I'm going to do that just yet so but I figured I'd come back to that for now while I was thinking about it get the rest of the holes drilled for the lights and get the stake pockets and rub rails on and then uh, probably work on the back tailgate, the back plate, and save the front plate for last. Okay, so what I got on the back, I got the plate temporarily just hung up here so I can figure out where things are going to go. Even though I have it drawn up, sometimes that doesn't always work out the way you intended when it comes to real life. So I wanted to make sure the lights were going to be at an angle and I was going to be able to run the wires to them and the back of the lights were not going to come into the stake pockets. So what I did after I installed it, I do have some standard trailer six inch LED lights from Amazon with a rubber grommet and I brought that in seven inches which gives me a, just a little bit of room past 
the stake pocket. Now, in order to get the line, I came down below my two by, because I know I don't want it any higher than that, so I came two inches down, which gives me a half inch up top to play with. Make sure I wasn't anywhere near there. That also gives me two inches on the bottom. Maybe a little bit heavy, but I'm not so worried about that. And I wanted an angle just for some looks. So it looks like 30 degrees. Works pretty good. Gives a nice lineup. I originally have a 45 degree mark on the side, but I think that's going to look a little goofy with a 30 and a 45 cutout. So I'm probably going to change this to a 30 just to make that line up a little bit nicer. So I gave myself a starting point and these lights coincidentally line up with a piece of two inch schedule 40 pipe. The radius works maybe not on the outside but on the part you need to cut out it's almost perfect and it's well good enough to to mark my lines for my cuts. So there's maybe a sixteenth larger, but again, they're, they're rubber. They'll take up the difference. So the first thing I did then, got a little bit of a, I can show you some progression. So I marked the first one. I just put the pipe right in the corner where I wanted it to go. Then I took framing square with a stair lock on it. And to cooperate there. Mark that at 30 degrees right up to the edge and then I was able to take the line from the outside of my pipe and get a straight line going down. And then on the flip side of that I can continue the line. So now I brought it down and was able to line my other end up that distance and then check it with the rubber grommet which the rubber grommet slides right out. I'm doing it one-handed. Hopefully that light's still good. And then I can line it up and see that it fits exactly how I want it to be with enough room. So the next thing was spacing. Now I'm going to tack some I don't know, three quarter or one inch just to protect the lights. If we're going to put ramps or anything on the back here, I want to make sure that the lights aren't going to get smashed. You know, if something was to fall off and smack it. So I want to give myself enough room for that. I think that come out to about two and a half inches apart here. Uh, but nevertheless, it ends up being start to start on the light is four and seven eighths. So I started the next light four and seven eighths down and you know made two more marks. So two brake lights and then a backup light. And here I just marked the end of the line of the bottom of the other one just to see where that lined up compared to the next light. So then once I had the next start, I was able to get my corner there and do the same thing and get my lines going and then here's my third one where I just drew the two inch pipe I still have to do the other end so a little bit hard for me to do that and film it but let me see if I can get the camera set up and you could see me do that So there I have it. I have my three lights, two brake lights, and turn signals, and one reverse light. Also up here in the corner, I will have roughly in this area here a three-quarter marker light, which is a requirement. And then over here, I marked on center, just marked the center of the plate, and I went six inches to the right, six inches to the left and there will be three three-quarter inch lights here. 
So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that pattern over there onto this side so that it's marked up. And mostly I'm doing this now, even though there's other work to do, just because I want to make sure I'm laying everything out in case for some reason I got to take something back apart uh, in case I miss something. One other thing I've got is down at the license plate. So this is a 10 inch piece of 3 16 plate, actually hot roll sheet. The license plate's not very visible from a standing point of view. So I've marked the corner of where the bumper is on each side and I'm going to come up a few inches and I'm going to, since I have no way of really bending this out, I'm going to have to cut this off and then weld it back in at an angle. And then what I'll probably use is those 30 degree pieces that I'm cutting off on the edge to make the side walls of that angle. And then that way the plate's more visible from the top and he doesn't get pulled over for not being able to see it while he's driving. And that's it. So I'll get that done. I'm gonna get this all marked up before I cut anything. And then after I have it marked up, I'm gonna recheck it and make sure I'm not missing anything. And <laughs> I'll probably still have missed something. But this gets me most of the way where I didn't miss something. Over here, I've still got to do the stake pockets and the rub rail, which as soon as I get this plate done, I'm going to start on that. But I felt like stopping and just making sure that I didn't have anything goofy. And I do have my three quarter lights drilled now here and in the front. And on the other side, I'm going to bring those stake pockets in about 10 inches. I'm going to start at about 10 inch from the end on each end and then space the two in the middle so that there's four evenly. And that's going to end up looking like this because this side is done. So we'll get started on that and then we'll come back because after that, if I get this front plate done, and that stake pocket's done. I do have more welding. These tubes aren't welded all the way around. I may want to do some reinforcements. Just stick some triangles here, just because of side loading, even though I don't think it'll be an issue, but I don't know. I stare at it and stare at it and say, huh. well, since I went so thin with the two by on top, I want to make sure it's sturdy. And we do have eight one and a half by one and a half, three sixteenths tubes here. And after that, I got the front plate to put on, which the only challenge I've got there, it would be relatively easy because there's four stake pockets going in, just like in the back, just in the front. So same deal there, but I've got to figure out what to do with that gas tube. So we got to bring that up and away from here over to here and make some kind of fill. I saw a YouTube video where a guy shortened it and made it so you had to fill it up way down under here and while I do believe that would fix the problem and that's great I think that's I think there's got to be a better way so I might be able to raise it especially since I've got got it spaced off the frame I'm going to raise it up a little bit and you might be at a hard angle when you fill but I think I'll eliminate the backsplash and maybe get this out of the way that it's not going to hit the cab and at the same time not be interfering with any loading or anything. I don't want to make anything in the way over in this way for loading. Um, the primary, I think the primary reason the size this is going to be is to load quads, load them from the side. So if we're going to have two quads sitting on here, well, I can't just make like a little flip up or something because if there's a quad on there, you're not going to be able to fill up. So that's going to make that a little different. Uh, the only other way I could see around that is if I did something in the middle here that wouldn't be in the way of a quad, you know, it'd be kind of like where the axle is, I could bring it over here and stick it up and then make a, like a, make a plate here. But I don't know what I'm going to do exactly there. I figured I'd move on to bigger and better and then come back to this. Now that I have the plate all marked, lights left and right, I drilled the center holes for the three lights in the center and also drilled the corner lights and I set up 
a leftover piece of tube for a guide, plasma cutter, cut this side off and start doing the tail light cuts. Now I'm going to use some guides and I'm, I'm going to see if I can find a guide to clamp down here to go around the radius. If I can't, I might just do it by eye because I can see the, the line. That'll require a little more cleanup than I probably want to do. So I'm going to try and, guide, try and find something to give me a guide first. And we'll see what that looks like when it's done. Well, I got the angle cut on the side. And I did the first light. And I'm doing a test fit. A little bit tight. In fact, it was so tight when I first cut it. I had to use an angle grinder to trim it out. Which, this is probably the way I want it so that it doesn't pop out on its own. With one hand, I can't get this thing to move at all. So I probably need to cut a little bit bigger than what I think I am, but that's probably pretty good because that way I'm not cutting it too big. So I'll cut the rest of them and we'll get this panel done. Tail lights are cut out. And now I'm going to work on the part that I'm going to angle in for the license plate. These here, these triangles, come off of the ends that I cut out. So I'm going to take that, I cleaned it up, and take that, put that here. I'm going to cut out this piece on the side, put these on here, and then that'll give me my back angle that I need. Of course, this is the facing panel, so I need to do it on the other side, but to get an idea, that's what I'm going to do, so I'm going to work on that now. cut out and this piece is going to be a little bit shorter and that's fine it doesn't need to be all the way down it's going to come up you know about an inch and a half short unless I squeeze it I could probably get it to about an inch so I'm going to go with that and maybe just cut this flush just to get rid of a jagged edge I think that would be fine because the whole point is to get the, vis the license plate visible so if I triangles that I cut off the end and I'm going to tack them on here and then get this plate fitted up. I'm probably going to have to clean more mill scale off because I think it would probably be easier if I did it now than after it's together because then there will be less working around. And I think I'm just going to temporarily tack it on there. I'll probably take a piece of angle and clamp it to this plate and then that way I get this on here straight and I don't weld it crooked. But if I just tack it, that might leave it flexible enough that then I'll put it back on the back of the truck and clamp it down. And then I could do a little bit more welding on it then just to hold it in place and make sure it's where it needs to be.
see the plate way better. I think that's acceptable. And the only other thing, we got some protection rails to put along the top so that if it ramps up here, it falls down, it doesn't smash the lights. Kind of like a grill, you know? Uh, I'm gonna put some one inch pieces here just as a protection. Those lights just fit in there with the rubber grommet so it wouldn't be hard to knock one out which actually isn't too bad because maybe you, instead of smashing it, it would just pop in and then you just have to put it back in place. But for now, I'm gonna get these, this tacked in the rest of the way. fitted in these stake pockets, tacked them down where they're supposed to go, just to hold them there. And that way I could get the clamps out of the way and just hang it for the moment. It's a little bit lower than it'll actually be. Just take that into account when I do this part over here, because what I'm doing is I shot at the back of this with some weld primer and I'm gonna reinforce this bottom with some one inch angle. So cut 30 degree and 30 degree. And that'll go in like that. That'll ridge it up the bottom here. So if a strap or something ends up being on there or whatever, I'll toughen it up. So I'll cut the other side, get that fitted up. Then I might just tack that down where it goes. So I could pull this back off and finish welding everything up. I'm planning on using one inch as well. So if I sat that, I don't know, about a half inch down, it still gives a pretty good protection. Got Still got a good distance on the light, so I don't know whether I'll do anything there or not, whether it really needs it. Uh, I think this might protect it plenty. Uh, that'll also make this top a little bit sturdier. And then once I get the top and these side pieces done, which this will just be straight flat bar, uh, one inch along the side here. Uh, once that's done, then I'll tack this all together, weld it up, and then it'll go on and then just stay on and be done with this back. The panel mounted up here. I have not tacked it yet. Just want to make sure everything's pretty good. So I think I'm going to hang it here for a little while and start on something else before I tack it. It is pretty sturdy. I mean, it doesn't flex at all, even though just a couple of clamps are holding it. I've got, I think this is one and a quarter pipe. I cut a piece, cut it in half. Lost one of them because it flung on me as I was cleaning it. And what I was going to do is stick that here, tack that on, just to go around that light. Maybe I'll tack these in, and then I'll move on and do this rub rail on this side and start figuring out what I'm going to do with that front plate. Uh, these are 8 inch pieces, and then I, I cut them 8 inches, then I cut them so that they were slotted and they fit up in there. Stuck them all together and put this angle on here. And then I stuck them at a 30 degree angle. That'll protect the lights. So if I read it for this panel, other than those light protectors, we'll come back when the rub rail, that's done and it's all tacked in. I could finish welding all these other welds, weld around here, and get that all done. Okay, the front panel. Got the pockets on. Piece of six inch, three sixteenths. And so far, what I've got for the fuel, the fuel neck, is cut a hole in it, and then I took a piece of that two inch pipe and put it in an angle, which I'm about to fit up. And that should bring that right up here. So that leaves me some slot, lets me move it around, and then I'm gonna make a bracket, I think come up here in an L. But I gotta stay, 
I'm thinking at least an inch off of this cab, but I think I could get it. I may just have to trim this off and come up with maybe a band clamp or something, but I think that, uh, that pipe is going to let me come right like this. So I'm going to have to extend the pipe, either get a longer hose or put this, uh, extend this pipe out, you know, cut it and weld it back together. But we'll see. So I'm going to fit the plate back up and then I'm going to see what I can do with this. And just as I started fitting this together, I realized I need to turn the intake or the uh, fuel neck a little bit. So I had to take the tube off for the vent because what I need to do is it was over here and it was running in the way. I need to turn this a little and put that tube down the side there. Well, turns out it's soldered on the side there and it's soldered in the hole. So I heated that up and took that out. And what that's going to let me do is rebend it exactly how I want it. So I'll just have to tweak it so that it goes the other way. And almost it just needs to fit over to the other side instead of where it was. Now for how hot this was, it's probably silver solder because it did not melt very easily. You pretty much get it red hot for it to come apart. So I'm also going to take this collar off, which I buzzed it down a little, looks like it's soldered on too. So I'm going to do that now, redo this tube, put that together, and then get it in there. And then the next thing I'll have to do is figure out how to get it over to the tank. And I think what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of one inch EMT, which coincidentally about the exact size I need. So I don't know yet, but at least I have an idea how I'll extend it because I can't seem to find one inch hose rated for that. At least not that isn't a replacement already and isn't long enough because it would just be the same one unless I got two of them, cut it, put a barb in between, but I don't want to put a barb in between and have that issue with restricting it. It's already one inch. It already seems a little small, so. So first thing is, I'll get this fit back together and get this in here. We are coming pretty close to the cab, but I think we're still okay. We're still about seven eighths, about three quarters of an inch there, so. I took a stake pocket, cut the one end off. I'm gonna mount that, weld that on the plate right here see how that lines up once I get the other part of this done. I can put it on here. That other part is got two pieces of one inch angle. Then I cut them, clamped them together. I'm going to weld those. Then I'm going to take a 5 16 nut because that's what I'm going to use to hold the fuel filler on. Um, I put it to a larger nut that fits right in here. I'll weld that all together. And then I'll need a little bit longer of a bolt after that. But this will just keep any weld splatter from getting in the threads. So I'll put all that together, weld this pretty much right where this line is. I'll put that here. And then I took two one and a quarter one holes for conduit and I cut it to size, welded it together, and then stick that in here and that bracket will go on here and then I'll be able to use that bolt to squeeze this down and hold it right where it needs to go. Probably do some kind of rubber insert here so it doesn't rattle or wear a hole in it. Stick it right like that. Fuel fillers figured out. <clears throat> I got the bracket on. It's got you know, about a good three quarter inch to the cab. I think that'll be fine. And what I did was I actually cut about six inches off the hose. 
then added this piece of EMT conduit. Fits a bit tight, so it should seal up well. Put that other six inch piece up in the front. And then um, the two pieces from the vent, I put a piece of fuel line in, 5 16 fuel line, and clamp that down. My bracket's just being held here by magnets right now. I'm gonna have to tack that in. I think I'll probably just tack it right now. I might wanna reinforce it in case it gets, you know, smacked. Um, and then I left this all loose because I'm gonna pull it back out and lift this, get this front plate welded in, and then lift this, uh, lift this whole thing off of here to clean it up and finish the welding and paint it. Front panels on, welded up. I went around and finished the welds underneath all the rails. And now what I'm doing is putting D-rings on, putting them six inches in. And these are the weld-on type. I got them from Amazon. They're kind of expensive for what they are. I think they were about eight or nine, maybe 10 bucks each. We'll put four of those on. There's one welded down, six inches in the whole way around. So I got this bright idea of a little 12 volt LED landscape light. I cut a piece of sheet metal I had laying around. It was already at a 90. Drilled a hole in. And I figured, you know, sometimes you're backing up and you can't see what's right behind your tire. So maybe I'd take this light, tack that on there, and then that would give us a little bit of a view of what you're backing up to. Because you're always relying on the marker lights, the reverse lights are back here, but if, you know, if, if there's something that you're missing and it's right at this corner, you're not going to see it. And maybe this will shed some light on it. So we're going to try that out. I'm going to put two, one on each side. And I drilled holes. Up here to put the wire harness. And I got these wire ties that have a push pin into them, so they'll just go right in there. I got some grommets to bring the wires in for the corner lights. And we'll just drop down from there to each of the lights. Drop down from here for the three marker lights. And then I drilled the same holes up the rail. And then across the front to do the same for the harness. So started wiring this, kind of got it roughed in here, do a lot of different uh, splices. Added this reverse light in here, tied in these, put it in the grommet, ran it across. My grounds are all terminated here on this side, and then I have the same thing over here on this side. And then down and under here for these three lights versus soldering them and make it easier to replace them, I epoxied some Wegos. These connectors, little flip up tab, you can take the wire in and out. So, my next step on this part is to actually put this all in wire loom to protect it, get it tucked up into these wire ties. So, but before I do that, I got to run the wire harness up to the front and catch those four lights. Wire loom installed, buckled down. So I left, I left this long, this goes down. I've got the right brake light, left brake light, chassis ground, tail lights, and reverse lights. And then I whack the plug off of the bed. We'll integrate this into the harness. Got to go out and mark the colors. Because I don't have anything that tells me what's what for that year. And 
they'll probably need to back the truck in and put it on. So it's probably about time to put it on now. Figure out how long this harness has to be, whether it has to be tied up here or down here because the bumper's right around this area here. So. Back on the truck, wired up, brought the harness, ended up bringing it across here and just wire tying it to the other harness, matched up the links, brought it down into the plug that I took off from the original bed and then I'm just going to leave that hang here like that. Also got the fuel filler hooked up. wire tied together to keep it from rubbing around and rubbing through. I took a piece of rubber and put it around the hole just so it doesn't wear a hole in the fuel filler neck. Put a clamp around it to hold it. And tightened everything down. And then put my bolt in with the two one holes to hold it up so it doesn't sit past the bed at all itself, you know, plus the rub rail. It's in there pretty solid. It's not moving. Touch this up and get the uh, get the wood on, and we'll see what the final look is. Still got to put the mud flaps on too, but I got a got a spot here is a little bit light mist on the epoxy, so I'll do that now. Okay, the wood is on. Took about 186 screws, quarter twenty self tappers. You got to drill seven sixteenths hole. We've got the mud flaps back together and this is what it looks like completed. Not too bad for a budget build. Thanks for watching. If this helped you or you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Oh yeah. One more thing I forgot to do. Weigh it. Let's get the final weight. So we're at 82.50, final weight. So figure two, the treated, I used treated two by eight and it was pretty wet. Only one or two boards were dry, so it'll probably lighten up maybe 30 or 40 pounds, but so good luck with your project. Thanks again.